Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today I would like to tell you about my favorite form of homology, cellular homology. Um, strictly speaking, it's not my favorite form since uh, singular homology, uh, simplicial homology and cellular homology are all the same, but there are also pretty amazing uh, non-singular homologies out there, which I will discuss a little bit, a little, at least briefly in another video. Um, but for, for computational Ish reasons and for humans, a cellular homology is actually pretty cute. And it's, it's not hard to compute it. Of course, it's well, as the name suggests, it wants a cell complex as an input, which is kind of the, we're kind of the main object of algebraic topology anyway. So let's have a look at a classical example of a cell complex. So our torus, so the torus certainly is a cell complex, and on the right hand side, I've chosen a certain a certain cell structure. Remember that a cell structure was just a collection of in this case, vertices, edges, and faces, which are glued together in a nice way. So, um, so the what skeleton is very easy in this case, this up to orientation. It's this thing, um, so two vertices, which are, maybe I should have done it in green, two vertices and four edges, well, glued together in this very nice way. And you just stick a, a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere onto this picture. So those are my, my purple uh, northern and southern hemispheres that glue onto the picture. Okay, and this should tell us, this, this tells us what the torus is, right? This is a cell structure of the torus. So this should tell us how to compute homology. That's kind of the whole idea. And the first step you do is just really, you just count. So you count the number of, well, vertices, edges, and faces, and you just let your set, uh, well, your CI, the chain groups, the cellular chain groups, just let them to be, let's say, some, take your favorite vector space, my, uh, take your favorite field, my favorite field is Q, take the corresponding uh, Q to the CI, where CI is a number, either the number of vertices, the number of faces, or the number of edges. And of course, for higher dimensional things, you just go on number of whatever, three cells, four cells, five cells, six cells, whatever. But very easy, very easy. Just count the number of cells in a given cell composition. This can't be a homotopy invariant because there are just zillions of cell compositions on the same space. So you need to do something to this um, data. And what you do is the following. So you construct a chain complex and that just means uh, you have now your, your bunch of um, uh, cues. Uh, so here is, I guess, uh, the second one and it's Q squared. Uh, and here's the first one, it's Q to the fours and here's the zeros one, it's Q squared again. You align them uh, on a necklace and you have certain maps between them, which people usually call delta or partial, whatever, so those boundary maps. And they're defined by looking at how things are glued together. Right, right now I just counted the number of cells. This just can't work, right? Just count the number of cells. Um, but we also want to know how things are glued together and this is encoded in those uh, maps. And you can think of these as matrices eh? in, the, in the following way, or if you don't like matrices, you can think of these as these pictures here, which I'm going to explain in a second. So how does it work? Well, there's an orientation involved. And if you ignore the orientation, you, well, you could still do it. You would, would need to work over a field where you can ignore orientations. It would be something like Z mod 2. But for now, I would like to work over Q. So I can't ignore orientations and it works as follows. So I look at my edge E1, for example, and this is one of my basis vectors of Q to the four. That's how I have built Q to the four anyway. I just counted the number of, um, of edges in this case. And let's just think those edges are abstract uh, basis vectors of Q to the four. And in the same way, the vertices are abstract basis vectors of Q squared and the faces are uh, abstract basis vectors of, this, of the second chain, right? Just as in my picture here. So F1, F2 and so on. And the maps are the boundary maps. So you look at E1, it is this map that jumps from V1 to V2, and it's just this edge that goes this way. So the boundary of V1 is, uh, of E1 is V1 and V2, and that's exactly what you hit in this map here. So you send it to, to those two basis vectors that's indicated here above here, and the sign tells you which one is start and which one is end. So the sign tells you uh, about the orientation I've chosen here. So V1 is the starting, 
point in my convention that means v1 gets a plus uh, v2 is the uh, end point in my notation that means v1 gets a uh, v2 gets a minus and you do the same for everything else so e3 for example uh, is exactly the opposite e2 is this funny map that maps around and there's a special rule uh, if it maps around it's just it's just a zero so so also v2 here is um is the boundary of my of my e2 i would like to associate to it plus one and minus one at the same time they cancel i associate with nothing so i don't have any edge outgoing from e4 or e2 here for exactly that reason uh okay so you look at how the one skeleton is glued to the zero skeleton and you get the first map. If you write that down in uh, in matrices, it looks like this, right? So uh, upstairs, I just wrote it down in terms of arrows instead of matrices, and I kind of ignored the zero arrows. By convention, I will never draw any zero arrows. They're just zero. They are there, but they're zero, so I don't care. Um, for F2, you do exactly, for, for, for going from F to um, E's, you do exactly the same thing. You look at the boundary. So F1, for example, it has a boundary all of the E's, as you can see. So here's my E4, uh, E1, E2, and E3. And it, it turns out that the rule here is that you look at how much you wind around the corresponding E. I'll show you an example later on, as another example later on. But for now, I just look at what, uh, what the winding here. So I don't wind it all around those two because they're just lines jump and I don't wind. Um, so I associate zero to them. I would ignore them in my uh, in my picture up here. And I wind around E2 in exactly the same orientation in this picture, because I, that's how I've chosen my orientation on F1. And I wind around E4 in, again, the same orientation. So both of them get, uh, get assigned one here. So the two arrows outgoing from F1 go to F E2 and E4, because I wind around once in the cor corresponding correct uh, rotation sense. And F2 is kind of exactly the same uh, by definition. So you get this chain complex. Now you have a lot of vector spaces and you have a lot of nice matrices between them. Right? That's what I just did. So I used, um, in other words, I used the cell structure, but the counting cell structure to define just the vector spaces. And I used the, I, I looked very closely how things are glued together to construct the corresponding matrices, the corresponding maps between them. And then you use, do the usual trick in homology. Um, homology is kernel, modular image, kernel, modular image. In, in this situation, so here's my picture again. Uh, all, all you need to do, because we work over Q here, is you have to compute ranks and kernels of the corresponding matrices. And I did that below here. So what you do is, OK, we have secretly have two extra matrices, which are a little bit boring. Um, because they are zero. So we write down, okay, kernel of this map here is two and the rank is zero. Why is the kernel two? Because this is Q squared, right? So Q squared goes to zero, so the kernel is, is everything. And the rank is, of course, nothing. Um, this is even more boring. Uh, the, the kernel is nothing and the rank is nothing because we, anyway, um, so very boring. And then you kind of compare always kernel and rank, kernel and rank, kernel and rank. And you, you take the corresponding difference, kernel minus rank, because I take kernel divided by image, right? So two minus one is one, uh, three minus two is two, and one minus zero is the last one is one. And that's my homology. So it's really kernel minus rank in, in this case. Very easy. It's actually pretty cute, right? So you take your cell complex, you write down the vector spaces by counting, you write down the matrices. It's a bit trickier. You have to look at how things are glued together. But as soon as you get that, it's just a matter of linear algebra. It's, it's a counting linear algebra type problem, mm -hmm. kernel minus rank. And that's your homology. And of course, the statement is that this is a homotopy invariant and a really powerful one, actually. Uh, so let me repeat. So the n cells or the n uh, cellular chain groups are just the, the n cells. So just the basis vectors are just two n cells. And the chain maps are given by the corresponding attaching maps, the gluing maps. And the homology is. Uh, kernel modular image and the crucial statement here is of course that yes this is a homotopy invariant that's what you want a homotopy invariant awesome and it gets even better it's not just a random homotopy invariant it turns out that for all reasonable spaces actually um, singular homology simplicial homology and cellular homology are all the same 
So you can kind of, depending on what you want to solve, choose the one that, that works best and just do it. So what I usually would like to do or would like to think about it is that singular homology has a general definition. So you should use it for kind of abstract arguments, but it's very hard to compute. Simplicial homology, it's super easy to compute. It's by definition, you just feed it into a machine. The machine doesn't care that you need super many or just a lot of triangles. It's just given by this triangulation principle. You just need a lot of them, but the machine doesn't care, just computes it. Um, so very good for machines. And cellular homology, I think, is pretty good for humans. So it, it's much more efficient than um, simplicial homology, but you have to look a little bit how things wind. It might not be perfectly uh, suitable for machines. But of course, the main statement is that they're all the same. So just pick the one uh, you like most. Um, so let me give you another example, just to, just to be sure here that we're all on the same page. And let me also say it actually should work over Z as usually uh, not over Q. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will explain to you in a second what, why I actually should do that. It's kind of easier to think over Q because then you can use this kernel minus rank rule. Um, over Z, you can't do that. You have to work a little bit more, but you also get more information. Anyway, let me have a look at an example. So here's a space which I kind, kind of can't really draw. It is, it's one skeleton is very easy. It's just a triangle with the corresponding edges and vertices. So the one skeleton is pretty easy. Well, the, the one part of my chain complex is pretty easy to write down. Right? I have three vertices, I have three edges, and I throw in the corresponding signs depending on uh, where, what is the outgoing vertex and what is the ingoing vertex of my edge. Not so hard to compute. I get a nice matrix here. Uh, that's how the matrix looks like. Very good. Or in arrow type pictures, that's how it looks like. And then I would like to glue in the two cell. Um, and I would like to do it by going around three times. I can't draw that anymore, but I could do that, right? I go around three times the triangle. So I go around once, and then I go around another time, and then I go around another time. In particular now, all my attaching maps are three because I'm going around and each edge is hit three times. Um, so I really draw a circle and each edge is hit three times. So all of my maps here are uh, three, actually. All of my um, attaching maps here are three. So the matrix is the matrix given by three, three, three in this case. Okay, and I do my rank and kernel trick again. Um, well. It's a bit boring. The 333 matrix doesn't have a kernel because 3 is invertible over Q. So um, the, the second homology is 0. Um, rank is 1. And you can calculate the kernel of, of the 3 by 3 matrix here. It's also 1. So um, the th first homology is also 0. Second homology is 0. First homology is 0. Uh, you do the same trick here. And you will see that the 0 homology is 1. So that's what it is. So I can't distinguish that space actually from a disk because homology tells me that it has the same as a disk. So this is homology, this is the same as the homology of a disk. Um, right? And I would define disk in a very similar way. I just would draw, draw in the, the triangle without running around three times. Right? So I can't distinguish it from a disk if I work over Q. If I work over Z, I can distinguish it from a, from a disk. But my computation is a bit more involved. I can't do the rank uh, minus kernel trick anymore. Because what happens now is that this matrix here, which has a lot of threes, three is not invertible in, 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 um, in, in Z. So actually, if you take a kernel modulo image here, what you get is Z mod 3 turning up. Um, and Z mod 3, well, this is certainly not something you see for the disk, right? For the disk, you don't see Z mod 3. So if you work over Z, you can actually distinguish um, this space from a disk. And it wasn't so hard. In general, if you work over, over a field, it's, it's really just linear algebra. You play your um, kernel minus rank game. It's really cute, really nice, but you might miss some information. So in general, you should work over, over Z. So here, we missed some information by working over Q, which is actually there and we can recover it. Running around three times is a times three map uh, in homology and times three maps are just not really well behaved. For example, in characteristic three, so in particular there, they, they have some funny behavior integral. Because from the integral case, you can go to any other ring um, by, by a tensor product, by specialization. Anyway, um, I'm already starting to waffle here or um, 
Uh, but cellular homology is pretty good. So you count cells, you look at the winding numbers, basically, uh, on the attaching map, you write down a complex of matrices, and you take kind of a, kind of a, a kernel module or a, a kernel minus um, image kind of perspective, depends a little bit whether you want to work over field or over the integers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.